In this video, we're going to start taking a look at how we can use NURBS to quickly create a character base that we're going to be building our topology on top of. Now, NURBS stands for Non-Uniform Rational B-Spline. Now, I know that sounds like a lot to swallow, but we're only going to be using some of the very basic functionality of NURBS to create our character base. Now, let's go ahead and create a NURBS object. That way, we can go ahead and take a look at what makes up the NURBS. So, we're going to come up here to Create. Drop this menu down, go to NURBS Primitives, and I want you to go ahead and uncheck the Interactive Creation box. Once that's unchecked, you can close this menu. We're going to go over to the Quick Select tab for Surfaces. Surfaces is going to contain all of your NURBS primitives as well as some of your NURBS tools. Now it's just like the Polygon tab where you have your polygon primitives along with some tools to work with polygons. You have those same tools in the surfaces menu. Now what we want to do is go ahead and select the NURB sphere. That's going to drop a sphere into our scene. Press W on the keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and move this up some on the Y and then press R to go ahead and scale it out some that we can we can see a little bit better what it is that we're working with. Now I'm going to press Q on the keyboard and just take a quick look at what really makes up a NURBS surface. Now a NURBS is not very much different from a polygon itself. If we right click on it, we go to isoparms. Isoparms are going to be these rings going around the NURBS surface. So you can kind of think of isoparms as sort of like edges. And then if we right click and we go to control vertex, you can kind of think of a control vertex as being a point or a vertex on a polygon model. And if we were to right click again and go to surface patch, you kind of think of a surface patch as being the polygon faces themselves. Now that's not what they are, but if you were kind of thinking of them conceptually or trying to compare one to the other, that would be the closest comparison that you can get to. The primary one that we're going to be working with to create our sculpt will be the control vertex, which will be the points. Now the great thing about NERS is it's kind of like a digital clay, meaning that if you take a look now, I've selected one of these points. In fact, I'll select one off to the side of it. And you'll notice that the left hand side of this NURB surface is not outlined, but the right hand side has this white outline going around it. If I press W on the keyboard and I move this one point around, you'll notice that all of these other surface patches are being affected by the movement of this one control vertex. So if I grab this and I drag it around, you can kind of see that everything that is outlined, all these surface patches that are outlined, are being manipulated by this one point. And you can kind of quickly get an idea that if I select one, I select another one, I can quickly create a fairly interesting sculpt just by moving some of these around. I'll hit Control Z to move them all back, but you can kind of think of this like Play-Doh or clay, because this is sort of the digital clay of Maya. NURBS were created before programs like ZBrush and Mudbox even existed. NURBS were sort of the tool that was used because these high poly sculpting programs didn't exist. They still have their place as they are sort of a quick way for you to get a sculpting object, an object you can kind of sculpt much like digital clay within a package like Maya or Autodesk 3ds Max. So with this NURB surface created, let's go ahead and add a couple more of these isoparms going around the object. So we'll go to object mode, select our object here, and we're going to drop down the make NURB sphere. Now in the spans, that's going to be our isoparms will be your spans. That's going to be how many spans we have going in a horizontal fashion around the model. We want to go ahead and increase this. So we're going to go ahead and increase this, say, to a 5. I think will be just enough for us to work with. And we can go ahead and leave these sections at 8. Sections will be your vertical isoparms. So if I were to select this and raise this up, you can see that it is affecting the vertical isoparms. If I hit Control Z or Control Y, put myself back in 5 spans, now let's go ahead and begin to shape this NURBS primitive to fit the torso of the character. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the for view and I'm going to go into the front view and press spacebar and I'll right click and I'm going to go to control vertex. Now again, as you recall, if I select just this one, it's not going to affect any of the surface patches on this side of the model. It's only going to affect surface patches on this side of the model. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of sculpting. We want to select all the ones going around this portion of the model. And if we marquee select, we'll also get the ones behind it. We want to start to shape this to fit the shape of the body. So I'll go ahead and press R and I'm just going to be using the scale tool to try to shape this NURBS surface to fit that character model. So this is very simple to do. And you can see I'm very quickly 
and you're just very, very quickly getting a very good base for this character model just by grabbing these control vertexes and scaling them around to get a better fit. And I'm just trying to line them up with this outline of this character from the front view. So all I'm doing is just scaling them and moving them to fit. Now that looks pretty good right there. That doesn't have to be 100% perfect. We're just using these nerves to create a surface to build our topology on top of. So it doesn't have to be perfect right now. You just want to get it kind of close. Now, as you can see, I've only shaped it from the front. So if I press space and I go to the side, he's still a big balloon. So we're going to have to work with both the front and the side and even possibly the top at times. So I can go into the side view and I'll go ahead and do the same exact thing. I'll just go ahead and grab some of these points and I'll go ahead and scale them in. And that's pretty good. And I'll go ahead and grab some at the base, scale these in, maybe move them over a bit. And I might have to grab these and move them in as well as scale them back out. Now this just takes a little bit of time. So you do have to be patient with it and spend just a little bit of time trying to get this shape as best you can. You might even have to move it down a little, move some of these down. Now I'm selecting and I'm just moving all of them together around a single ring. And then I'm going to begin to modify that even more by moving individual control vertex. So I can see that I have quite a bit of room here. So just R and we'll move that in and move this one back out. And then I'll go ahead and grab the one at the base here and try to scale this in some. Now I can see that I need to sort of move this section up a bit and maybe move it over. I'm just trying to get a base shape here. So this looks pretty close. Let me move this back a little. Now sometimes you can also go into press 4 on your keyboard. That's going to put you into wireframe mode and it can be a lot easier to shape the object based in wireframe mode. So I can press W, maybe move these over. And just try to get a basic shape going here. Move them down a little bit. That looks pretty good. Now that I've moved them all together and did some scaling all together, I'll go ahead and recheck the front view and I'll press four in this view as well so I can see this in wireframe mode. And I can see this, I move this down, so maybe I should move that back up. It looks a little better there. And the base here where the crotch is, is way too low. So I might want to move these up some right here to better match up with the crotch of the character. And this looks pretty close, looks pretty close in the front. Now what I want to do is start moving some of the individual control vertex in order to get a better shape. Now what I usually do is I find the center point right here and I will grab all of the control vertex on one side of the center points. This would be the center isoparm for this view. So I would want to move some of these to better match this shape here and maybe even select a few of these. And now I can go ahead and just drag these down. But you notice I didn't grab the ones in the middle. I just grabbed the ones in the side. This is just a method of working with these. So I can go ahead and grab these two here. I'm not grabbing the one in the middle, just these ones on the front. Move them out a little bit then grab these ones, move them in and just try to get a closer shape using these control vertex. So I'll come over here to the front and this actually all looks really good. I don't really think I need to mess with this all too much. Maybe I can select these two right here. I'm going to go into this view here just to take a look at exactly which ones I grabbed here. Okay, so I grabbed the ones on the side. So I'll come back into this and I'll move these up just a tad bit. And this looks pretty good. So I think that's where I'm going to stick with the torso. So in the next video, we'll go ahead and quickly create the leg. And then we'll take a look at how we can very quickly duplicate one leg over to match the other leg. If you have any questions or comments, please post below the video on brainpoof.com. And click subscribe to follow us on YouTube.